Oh, Turn the lights down, that's better. Yeah. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, nice to see you all here after lunch. Um, I can nice say enjoy the sleep after that can't wait lunch we've had. Um, so please just drift off. Um, anyway, um, I'm here to talk about uh, some uh, big excavation we did in Edinburgh, as John said. Um, I didn't choose the title, so I'm probably more honestly called it. Um, you know, bring another industry in the heart of Edinburgh. Um, it's uh, you know, it's a bit of a, a run through the findings of an excavation that we've uh, recently concluded. Um, so we've not got all the results in yet. So it's more of a run through, and it's uh, probably a little bit misleading to make another industry in the heart of Edinburgh as the, the main thrust of the talk. Anyway, without further ado, um, I don't know that looks quite washed out here, but um, I hope you can see it. Lights again, John. All right. So you'll, you'll get a better view of it in a minute. This is just a, a quick slide just to uh, give you an idea of where we are in Edinburgh. Uh, this is Hollywood Road running along here, um, St Mary's Road running up here, um, the Pleasance here, and that's St John's Road just running down there and the Royal Mile up the top there. So we're, we're, we're sort of at the, uh, the, the west end of uh, the, yes, the west end of Hollywood Road. Um, and you see we've got uh, we have a site on the uh, north side of the road, uh, site here on the south side of the road as well. And this next slide just to give you an idea of what the uh, what it looked like um, before we started. Um, some of you will very definitely know the site. Uh, this is the old Edinburgh University uh, buildings that were on uh, St John's Street here, um, and this is one of the newer Edinburgh University buildings here. This is a, a patch of waste ground. And to the side with the, uh, the multi-story car park here. Um, so this is what the site looked like basically when uh, we were tasked to uh, find out if there was anything there. Um, and that was uh, up until obviously very recently. The site's been redeveloped by the University for Halls of Residence, um, which is why we had an opportunity to go in here and uh, do the works that we did. Um, we're going to deal very quickly with the, uh, the excavations we did on the south side of the road. Um, before moving on to the north side of the road, as they are a bit more complicated and take a little bit more time to deal with. Um, these slides are really just to give you an idea um, of the site that we had, which is this um, little red area in here. And as you can see, by the 19th century, if my, if my mic's still there, do, talk, do ask if my mic was off. Um, you can see, oh, that's not what we want to do. Um, you can see we've got buildings on the site already by the sort of early 19th century uh, on Scott's map here, and then by the middle of the 19th century, the site's a lot more developed. Um, you know, but again, we've got this main frontage building here, which ties up very nicely with the building you know on the earlier map. So we've, we've got this sort of uh, you know early use of the site, uh, and this is the first map evidence we have of anything on the site. The map before this just shows is, is open ground. Um, it was quite a simple job this, uh, we did a bit of evaluation, we found this back wall here um, and then when the developers came onto site we took over the watching brief and uh, stripped the site off. Now at the back of the site there was nothing, uh, it had been completely truncated away uh, and went down onto bedrock and there was, there was absolutely nothing there. Um, at the front of the site uh, we had the building that obviously you saw in the, the earlier maps I was showing uh, we found evidence of this terraced into the hillside. Um, the south side of Hollywood Road would be quite a steep hill um, up until very recently, um, and these buildings have been terraced into the hill um, to provide their foundation. And you can see the back wall of the building here, and then we've got these surfaces out front of the wall here. Um, what it looks like we've got is we've got a series of stalls. You can probably see um, a series of you know breaks in the surfaces here and here. And what it looks like we actually have is we've got animal stalling um, within this building. And what we suggest probably we've got here is we've got a, a stables, um, a large industrial stables if you like, for, um, for cart horses. Uh, this area was you know, very heavily given over to industry in the 19th century. Um, you all probably know that there's a lot of breweries along um, Hollywood Road. Um, so there's a lot of brewing, there's a tannery, there's a tannery next door where the car park was, there's a tannery just up the hill over here. Um, so you've got a lot of industry, and this is probably a stables for, um, you know, uh, you know, for horses. Uh, this is just a quick overlay of uh, the excavations 
my excavation results, should I say, over uh, the mid 19th century Ordnance Survey base. And you can see quite nicely that the buildings we have match up quite clearly with these buildings that are matched, probably no surprise there. But again, you've got the wall lines here, and we've got an outdoor courtyard area in here. So, you know, we what we uncovered here was largely what one would expect to find based on the map evidence. Um, but quite a nice little piece of Edinburgh's uh, industrial heritage there, um, which ties in with the, you know, all the rest of the industrial use of the area of that period. There was nothing earlier here, as I say, this was founded directly onto the bedrock. Um, so, you know, we, we didn't have any early deposits or any early features uh, on that site. So, with no further ado, we can uh, switch over to the north side of the road, um, where we had more extensive excavations. Um, you can see from the map, obviously, that's the high street, as we've already looked at. This is Holyrood Road, and um, this is our site here in the red. And um, the site occupies the Burbage plots to the rear of the high street. So these were the medieval Burbage plots, the rear of the high street. Um, and you can see the level of development that had taken place in the more recent part of the, uh, the, more recent part of the 20th century. So I think about the 1960s, these buildings. Um, possibly 70s, um, very heavily built, um, massive foundations piled quite deeply in many places. Um, so was, you know, be, be quite a lot of damage had been caused by these buildings when they were built. Um, and the first task, obviously, that had to be undertaken was these buildings had to be demolished. So you know, demolition program prior to the excavation. And what we uh, ended up then doing is. Um, development actually had to start almost immediately upon the, the demolition happening. So we had to do our excavations in a series of blocks. Now, um, the blocks that are marked are actually the buildings that are being erected now. So we dug the site in blocks, if you like. We dug this block, and we moved over, and we dug this block, and this block, this block, and this block, and the areas in between. Um, and that allowed us to start basically here and work our way around and move the site, and allowed the developers to come in and build and move the site. So, you know, we work hand in hand with uh, Balfour PE throughout the entire program to keep the development going and to make sure that we've got our excavations done. Uh, it meant some quite uh, time consuming surveying, as you can imagine. Uh, we had a lot of survey points around the site, so we were able to tie in all the little excavation areas so that we didn't lose any, um, you know, control over where archaeological features were on the site. Uh, one of the things we did find quite early on was uh, to the north of this dotted red line, there's absolutely nothing survives. And the site's quite a steep slope from the high street down to Hollywood Road. And uh, when they developed the university buildings and probably earlier buildings as well, um, they terraced into that hillside, and that again was, was directly down onto the bedrock. Nothing survived. But to the south of this line, we had quite a lot of soft deposits surviving, and we're at the bottom of the hill, so you can imagine it's like a, you know, you can imagine the deposit collecting at the bottom of the hill, and uh, the later university buildings were actually built and piled through those soft deposits, but I hadn't removed them in their entirety. So, the very sort of first archaeological horizon that we hit um, below the, below the um, university buildings were uh, the remains of the sort of 19th century breweries. And you can see from this uh, Ordnance Survey map of 1893, the site's quite heavily developed with breweries and with obviously brewing premises and it's like this from about the middle of the 19th century um, so from about the middle of the 19th century onwards um, you know this is heavily given over to brewing and you see some very massive buildings in here well, we've got two breweries um, we've got the Edinburgh and Leith brewery and the St Mary's brewery over in this corner this lateral comes into I think a, a Maltings or something like that but the whole site you know, retains this you know <laughs> use as a brewery for brewing from the mid-19th century. So when we stripped off the university buildings, um, came down onto the, uh, the archaeology of the brewery, and you can see all the, the, the various wall lines, uh, surfaces. Uh, we've got a, there's a well somewhere over in this area over here. And again, a bit of the brewery over here. But that's obviously St Mary's Brewery, or part of St Mary's Brewery. And this is part of the sort of Edinburgh and Leith Brewery over here. Um, they were very heavily demolished, um, so it was quite a shame. We couldn't really ascribe any function um, from the excavated results. We couldn't really ascribe a function to any of the buildings. Um, there just really wasn't enough 
surviving um, to, to tell what, they were, what processes were being carried out, if you like, in the individual structures. Um, we have tried to overlay these against the, uh, the 19th century US map base. You can see um, that that actually ties in. Oh, we eat this in a minute, do the apologize. Um, you can see that ties in very nicely with the map evidence. We've got the wall lines coming down here. So we've got the interiors of buildings here and here and here. Um, you know, again, we're inside the buildings here. But you can see the wall lines all tying quite nicely. So it's actually quite a nice result, this. But uh, it still doesn't give us any further information about what was actually taking place within those buildings. I mean, obviously, we could go and get the plans in time if required from Registry House and from the Scottish Brewing Archives. And we can find out what indeed was being carried out here. But for the purposes of this talk, we haven't gone that far. As you can see, quite a nice result. And these were the, say, the, the, the first phase of, 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 of the archaeology, if you like, or the last phase of the archaeology that we dealt with. Um, these are just a few slides showing um, what, we, what we encountered. Um, you can see the brewery buildings here. This is one of the better preserved bits. A lot of it, um, you know, we're only talking 20, 30 centimetres of wall. Here you've got well in excess of a metre of wall. Um, you can see um, we've got some floor surfaces. We've got a flat floor surface here. We've got a cobblestone surface here. But again, in other areas, you can see there's absolutely no flooring surviving. So this is, they were very heavily disturbed, very heavily demolished, which meant we just really couldn't tell what was going on. Um, this is one of two massive wells that we identified. Um, these were cut into the bedrock. These were actually closer to that red dotted line that I indicated on the map rather than the deeper deposits. But you can see there's a, 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 a big old well here um, cut into the bedrock. It was about two meters across. Um, and you can see it's still functioning as a well here, although I really don't fancy the purity of that water anymore. <laughs> um, we, well, not us personally, but Mark Beatty sent a log down at a um, remote operated vehicle, and um, that went down over 15 metres. Um, so we presume that is going into the, the, the actual the Edinburgh aquifer, if you like, um, which is obviously one of the reasons that there were so many breweries in this area. Um, but that, that, that was a, you know, a, a massive, massive structure. It was, and it was dug straight through the bedrock. You can see it cut through the bedrock here. There's a little bit of brick collar there, but it was, it was mainly just dug through the bedrock. An incredibly, uh, you know, an amazing piece of engineering. I have no idea how they achieved that. Um, as I say, it was one of two. Um, I think that this one, because it was positioned on site, was part of the Edinburgh and Leith Brewery. Uh, the other one was slightly further to the west. And we think that was probably part of the St Mary's Brewery. Um, each brewery had to have its own water source, so you know we think we pretty clearly found the water sources for the two breweries here. Um, this, uh, I believe, they capped it and they have to pump it. There's, there's nothing they can do because it's, it's feeding up from the aquifer, so it's uh, you know it's it's alive well and always will be. Um, this was I just like this. I think it's quite nice. Um, we found that in the bottom of a sump, a, a drainage sump in the brewery. It's a little wooden firkin barrel. Um, just as an aside, and just slightly interesting, it's a William Younger's fucking brewery, that's a William Younger's badge there. Um, as far as I'm aware, this was never owned by William Younger's, uh, either of the breweries here, I may be wrong, uh, somebody may tell me, but uh, William Younger's brewer, brew, brew, brewery was uh, further down Holyrood Road underneath what's now the Scottish Parliament, um, and was demolished when the Scottish Parliament was built. Um, so just a few finds there from the brewery. Uh, beneath the brewery, um, we had a deep deposit of garden soils, and you can see them here. The brewery was built right on top of them, and that's these garden soils here, and then here, and under there. Uh, and these were quite thick, organic, quite homogeneous, full of vines, full of pottery, bone, um, ash, coal, um, you know, but, but very, very organic and very, very, very enriched. Um, and because they were so homogenous, um, we test pitted these for fines and then we took it down in spits until we reached reach the next archaeological horizon. Now, the garden soils, I suppose, the reason that they're so full of fines is at least this has been due to manuring that's been taking place in the burgage plots and it's been household waste and garden and then and, and, uh, night soil basically to, to enrich, enrich the soils. Uh, and we presume that this is um, for horticulture. Um, and we know in a steel from um, the, uh, the, the um, 
parliament excavations here for some of my ideas, but we seem to have just a, an ex the same process, the same things going on here. Um, and we have uh, evidence here that the, uh, the Burgish plots were given over to horticulture at least as far back as the 17th century there. Um, this is Gordon Rothamy's map, many of you will know it, and our site's roughly sort of in there. And you can see that this, the Burgish plots have been given over to gardens, possibly orchards. Um, Edgar's map here up in 1762, and it shows the beginnings of sediment creeping into the rigs, well, not the rigs, but the, the Burgish plots, but again, mainly garden. And on Ainsley's map, 1782, again, you know, you have got development, you know, you've got buildings coming into the, to the Burgish plots, um, but again, still an awful lot of garden area. So we appear to have these thick garden deposits, probably, you know, from, from this period. Um, Scotch Parliament excavations, um, they put the, uh, if you like, the, the, the beginnings of the gardens, um, and I've just lost my mic, isn't I? Typical. It comes away in a t-shirt rather than a shirt, eh? Um, they put these back by about another hundred years, so they think that actually um, the, the, the gardens within the, the British plots go back to probably about the 16th century. I uh, see no reason really not to believe that that would be the case here. Um, we had a few features associated with this period, not very many, as you can see. Um, they're quite scattered around. Uh, this is because of the, you know, highly developed later nature of the site. The archaeology was very fragmented. Uh, we had a few walls. We've got a wall here, a north-south wall here, a <coughs> north-south wall here, another one up here. We've got a well in here, and we had a, a sort of a, a drain and a sump, if you like, over here. Um, the walls are probably burgage plot walls. Um, if we go back to the slide, you can see, you know, that these burgage plots are all divided up all the way through. And what we're probably dealing with here is, is, is burgage plot walls. Um, not unusual, kind of what we would expect. Um, just to go through a couple of the features here. Um, this was quite nice. I actually really quite like this feature. This was um, our drain and our sump. This sump's up there. This is the drain coming into it. Um, one of the more interesting features I say that we dug from this period, probably the most interesting feature we dug from this period, had a really nicely stratified um, group of objects in it. Uh, we have about 12 <coughs> post-medieval um, vessels in pieces, um, and not, not whole from out of here. But also within that, we found three coins here. Um, these, I think, are gilt um, pins. And this little bit of chain link here, which again, we think is gilt, possibly a bit of jewellery or possibly a clothing decoration. Um, quite interesting, these, it, possibly an indication that this, the water that was being discharged into the drain here was actually um, draining a domestic structure rather than an industrial structure. These would seem to be quite grand things to, to have been discharged um, through an industrial process. So possibly this was coming from one of these buildings that we, we saw in the, 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 sort of, uh, the, the, the maps that were in the rigs or in the burnish plots, or possibly it's coming from outside of there. Um, but, but quite a nice set of finds, and I say, probably more likely to be uh, associated with domestic use uh, in this area. Uh, this is the well that we identified, uh, quite a nice well built well as you can see. Um, this is the very bottom of it, it was something like about 6 metres deep and we've actually reduced the site to get down onto this. This is the very bottom of where we've excavated, you can see it's lined with stone all the way down, so some, some poor fellows had to go down there and line that. Um, not quite sure why, because it is dug into bedrock, although the bedrock was very soft. It was a sort of quite soft, sort of grey stone, silt stone, um, so it may not have been, um, you know, may not have held the water very well. Um, just not sure what it was for. It's obviously a well, it's obviously for water, but is it domestic? Um, or is it, you know, for watershed gardens? Um, or, or is it indeed both? But uh, again, a nice feature, and it was, you know, it survived for a, a good depth. Um, so that was, that was the sort of features that we had associated with that period. Um, below the garden um, soils, if you like, below the use of the, the, the burgage plots of garden soils, certainly um, along the south side there appears to have been um, a period of use um, for industrial processes. Uh, and, you know, again, this is, this is the south side of the, the, the burgage plots. Um, everything else above had gone, so we don't know what was going on up here. Um, but this uh, industrial use probably dates somewhere between about the 15th and the 12th century. Um, 
it's been better dated on the Scottish Parliament site because we've had the full post excavation programme done. Um, we've got hints from our pottery that um, this, we do have dates going back to the 12th, but um, you know, this is, this is the sort of what we have. Um, I'm just going to treat this as one phase, there was a few sub phases of um, industry in here, but it was all from broadly the same period. And just for ease here, I'm just going to treat it as a one sub one one phase. Um, interestingly, though, um, soil deposits we had between the sub phases um, weren't as organic as the soils above. I had very very few finds in them, so there's no manuring happening here um, during this period, which tends to suggest again we're not growing anything here, and that this supports the idea that this is mainly given over to industry in this period. Uh, we have, uh, as you can see, um, a tank tank here. We have a tanning tank in here, um, I've got better photos, but there's a series of barrel-lying pits in here. Um, we have some rubbish pits over here. And we have these walls again. Um, these are on the north-south and some are in east-west alignment. Again, we think these are burgage plot boundaries, so you know we have the, the, the actual laying out of the burgage plots, you know, shows that they were still important, you know, back into this period, through this period, they were still being defined, obviously. Um, you know, and, and this is this is the evidence that we have for this. Um, these are a couple of shots of the tanning tanks. Um, one much more impressive than the other. Um, this is one of them in here. Um, this is the contiguous pile wall along the south side of the site that had to be put in to allow us to excavate. Um, that's street level all the way up there. Um, and you can see that these are right in the south end of the uh, of the of the burgage plots. Um, so that's one in here, let's cut those up here. And we've got the other one in here. This one's obviously much nicer. Um, we've got a very well-built stone wall here, stone flag floor. Um, you know, so these tan tanks we've got here. Very, very similar features were found in the Scottish Parliament excavations as well. Um, and, you know, the position on the south end of the rigs probably shouldn't come as a surprise. I mean, tanning would have been a pretty noxious undertaking, um, and nobody would have wanted that near their houses, so that's probably one reason that they're right at the far end, right at the south end of these burgage plots, rather than up at the north end by the houses on the high street. Um, when they went out of use, when these have fallen out of use, um, there's been a bit of tidying up happened on site. Um, these have just been backfilled with all the debris of the tanning process. Uh, in this particular tank here, we had a lot of offcuts of leather um, in here, um, animal hair. Uh, a lot of uh, bone, um, had a lot of hoof, um, and a lot of um, horn. I'm um, uh, led to believe by Jennifer Tom's had a quick look at the stuff that that's uh, normal for a tannery. Um, the skins came in with the heads and the hoofs on, and then they'd been removed and thrown away as basically waste um, produce, which is why we found these in the tanks. Um, basically, they were sealed as well. It was interesting, they were sealed with clay uh, and stone. Um, presumably to keep the smell down um, once they've been backfilled, but that did give us this really nice anoxic environment with you know, no oxygen if you like, um, and that's what preserved the leather and the hair quite so well um, within these tanks. The leather has not been looked at yet, but it appears to just be um, off cuts. We've not seen anything that we can define as a, a product of like, like a glove or a shoe or anything like that. Um, it could be that the, the leather is just coming from the trimming of the hides after they've been tanned, um, to make them into a more um, formal shape, if you like, or it could be that it's off cuts from, from, from actually items being made, but it's, it's not been um, really looked at yet. It's also still sitting in the fridge. One of the other um, interesting groups of features that we found were these barrel line pits. Um, you can see the guys rolling about in the mud here, having a lovely time. It was a disgusting sight to work on. Um, you got there's, you have to believe me, but there's a, a tanning tank on any um, Phil's feet here. Um, sorry, not a tanning tank, a barrel pit, excuse me, a barrel pit under here. One here, one here. One just going under the vault there, and another one in here. And this tanning tank, one of the tanning tanks we looked at is actually in there. Now, the position of these tanks within the stratigraphic sequence and the proximity to the um, tanning pits makes us think that they're probably involved in the process of tying, um, you know, as part of that industry. Uh, they're probably used to hold liquids, which is why they have barrels in the pits. Um, so they're probably holding liquids, possibly water, possibly something else, 
or they could have been used for seeping something in um, as part of that process. And you can see that they're, uh, you know, the, the anoxic conditions that we had again, this oxygen free um, atmosphere because they were sealed with clay and, and they're uh, cut into clay. Um, you can see the barrels themselves have been quite nicely preserved, the base of one barrel there, the base of another there, and that's the sort of um, the, the sides of the barrel preserved on the edge of the pit there. We had a number of um, rubbish pits, and we can just flip back as highlighting those. Um, we had a group of rubbish pits in here. This one we initially identified as possibly being a ditch. I mean, myself and John got quite excited and thought we'd maybe have like one of the, uh, the, the medieval boundary ditch of the, uh, of the town, but it's, uh, now that we've looked at it more closely, it's, it's much later in the sequence. And we can't trace it any further in this direction. It terminates here. Um, we had a brewery wall in here, which is why there was this gap. There was a, a, a massive stone wall built in here, which you'll see in a second. Um, and we couldn't identify this any further, even with the excavations we had in here. So we think and it must have terminated just at some point uh, underneath the wall or just before the wall, if you like, just by pure chance. Um, this is this feature here. Um, I see a boundary ditch. You would think it's a pit, um, so a big linear pit. That's the brewery wall there, so we think it's probably terminating somewhere underneath this wall. Uh, quite a deep feature. Um, it was full of uh, horn core and animal sort of feet, if you like. So again, we think it's the debris from the tanning process is being buried in these pits uh, to clean the area up. The top of this pit, as with the other pits, are all sealed um, with stone. It was a very wet area, as you can see from the excavation shot earlier on, or as you've seen from the excavation shot earlier on. And uh, we think that that's then basically backed on the tops of these pits um, stone so that they can actually move about on the surface because this would have created a very wet, boggy hollow if just back filled with soil. Uh, I'm sure you'd have been up to your knees in it as you tried to walk over the top of it. So it's probably just a case of trying to firm up the surface um, to allow the area to continue in use if you like. Um, these are a couple of features. These are two of the earliest features that we had on site. Um, but it's a uh, shows that the features that we had continue to be of an industrial nature and rather than a, a, a domestic settlement nature, if you like, we didn't find anything that we could say was a house uh, or anything like that. Um, these, you see, the two of the earliest features we had, um, we've got these nice double pits here. Uh, these look a bit too, too well built to be um, tanning pits, uh, too well built to be just rubbish pits. We think these were probably associated with tanning as well. Um, they had similar features down in the uh, Scottish Parliament site that they were stone lined um, and they thought they were tanning pits. Uh, we had this nice stone lined pit here. Um, again, a bit too elaborate to be uh, just a rubbish pit. Um, and it was dug down. This is actually bedrock here. Um, that silty bedrock that we looked at on the side of the, uh, the well. So we've got a stone lined pit with a stone base in it. Very similar to the tanning tanks we looked at earlier. That's uh, probable that this is a nearly tanning tank as well. So really, in summary, um, the excavations that we have here um, have identified largely what's been identified elsewhere along Hollywood Road, which is very nice. I'm very glad that we're not bringing anything too unusual to the party. But we have the rigs being sort of set up in the 12th century. Um, we have um, early, the early use of the rigs would appear to be industrial in nature. Um, we've got a lot of tanning. Tanning is found down at the Scottish Parliament sites. We seem to have a a lot of tanning happening here. Again, probably not surprising given the cow gates just up the road. But the animal markets were bringing animals down to the tanning sites. Um, all makes sense to me. Um, and then we have this use of the burgers plots as gardens, starting sort of in the 16th century and moving forward. And then we have, in the 19th century, the burgers plots being developed heavily for industry. And as long as the case is, is the case, excuse me, along Hollywood Road, because that's mainly to do with brewing. <coughs> so it just falls for me to say, thanks to Barker Beatty for all the help, and uh, thanks to John for his enduring enthusiasm whilst we were all drowning in the mud. <laughs>